This is my home, the Ifugao Rice Terraces in and around Banawe in the northern Philippines. For centuries, these magnificent agricultural terraces have been a unique farming community. But this unique culture of my people is rapidly disappearing as the younger generation seems to have lost interest. I hope this is not true of my two sons with whom I often take walks in the countryside where I point out the heritage that is theirs to preserve. To aid in that preservation, for 12 years now, my American husband, Jean, and I have, through the magic of the video camera, recorded field operations, rituals, and the feelings of the elders, the Mumbaki priests, and experts of the culture like okay. Manuel Bulawa. All the narration or story of the origin of rice. The Ifugao developed Sweden farming, including the culture of uh, dry, uh, say rice, planting of rice in the mountain sides, mm -hmm. until, according to the myth, the brother, uh, brothers Kamigat and uh, Balituk got this kind of uh, variety of rice from Kabunyan. They pour the wine and they drink. After a while, they pray to and invoke their ancestors on both sides for the right on the origin of rice. They finish invoking and take out the chickens. They pan bless the seedlings to be transplanted. They slit the chickens and sing them. They cut them open and inspect the bile sacks. And the signs are good. Over the centuries, during the rice harvest time, while the men, led by Mumbaki priests, conduct their rituals in the granary above, the women have toiled in the fields below, singing to maintain the rhythm of the harvest. Mr. Chedoro Bagilat, governor of Ifugao province, told me these traditions are worth preserving. Uh, it is primarily an agricultural uh, land as well as a cultural symbol. Let's not preserve the rice terraces for the tourists. Yeah. Sabi ko, but let us preserve it it's for the Ifugaos yes. and you know, for the appreciation of the um, of the Filipino culture by the Filipinos themselves. I talked at length with Mr. Juan Dai, a student of the Ifugao, who had many interesting insights into our culture particularly the importance of our Mumbaki priests. The Mumbaki is the repository of Ifugao culture. The Ifugaos do not have a written language, a written dialect. Everything is there in the head and heart of the Mumbaki. And the Mumbaki is a rare, I'd say, quotation mark, a rare animal. Because once he's initiated, once he learns the, the, the responsibilities of a Mumbaki, he knows, he becomes now first, he becomes the repository of our culture. You ask him about taboos, Customs and tradition, he knows. He is also an arbiter. When there are disputes in the locality, he's, he is the arbiter and he's respected. You may be a lawyer, you may be an engineer, but the people will respect more the Mumbaki in his own locality because he is the one who holds the culture of the people. <laughs> Our uh, our rituals then now that is not being continued almost. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you agree that it is? Uh... Well, because everybody are already giving up mm -hmm. the 
Okay. We don't mind or do you pass a performance of our opinions. They do not mind. They don't mind. They don't mind already. I talk of many things with the aging Mumbaki Yogyog Dogapna, truly among the last of a dying breed. He knows this and he is sad. Although many Mumbaki are quitting or retiring, he told me that he will perform the rice and other rituals until his last breath. Like my husband and I, other Ifugao are also using modern technology to preserve our culture. Mr. Mario Lachauna, he uses audio tape materials to perform his rituals. And so, as I walk with my sons through the terraces, I try to encourage them to know and be interested in the Ifugao side of their heritage. I am hopeful that they will be able to take the same walk with their children someday. In the meantime, we will continue to record for posterity the activities and rituals of the Ifugao culture and document the people's points of view about its faith. <laughs>